it's night of evening star night of evening star is here and we're gonna play some dungeons dragons now dmca stop don't do it <laughs> don't know what you mean that was a completely original uh theme and song uh, sounds original to me yeah i boosted absolutely. the bass they won't claim it yeah there okay. you go look nate knows what he's doing he's got it down hey welcome everybody uh it's time for episode two of the final season of Knights of Evening Star. And we got a lot. We got people that got to shoot. So you're going to get a super rapid intro. We got Anna Prosser. We got Shady Penguin. We got Mika Button. We got Nate Sharp. Everybody's here. We're going to play. Uh, is there anything else that needs mentioning? Anna Prosser, because you're the organized one. No, and go. I never remember. Games Great. Play. Here's the recap <laughs> of what happened last time. A year has passed in Cormir, and a civil war has erupted across the kingdom. Queen Raedra Oberskir and Davian Cormoril, who is under the service of the dragon, the green dragon Shadowbriar, clash throughout the realm. Davian is aided by a faction of Shadowbriar's cultists called the Thorns, who have been preventing Raedra from bringing her full force to bear. Evening Star, meanwhile, has prospered thanks to the riches found in the silver mine, and the party have gone on their own quests and journeys, gaining powerful relics and boons in the process. Queen Raedra has sought their aid in dealing with these Thorns, and their, with their spy mistress, the Green Dragon Willow Song, a plan was devised to locate and ambush the Thorns' main lair. With their unit of Tressim Knights, the ground force led by Knight Commander Alyssa and the party themselves, they engaged the Thorns and took them by surprise, sailing their military force before entering their lair, where they promptly slaughtered and interrogating the saboteurs and the cultists with giant scorpions, sneak attacks, mega lightning, and Clive. On reaching the leader's <laughs> chamber, a noble named Lord Miron seems unfazed by this assault and triggers a ceiling collapse right on top of himself that and the party. Right. Oh, that right. is where we begin with all of y'all. Please making dexterity saving throws for me, please. Oh, child That's how we're going to begin. <laughs> do I see this coming? Save? Yes, you do. Yeah, you get your dangerous Yay. Oh, wow. Where did that dexterity come from? Uh, that's a 17 for me. 16. 18. 18. And how do finally... I? Oh, wait. That's the low. Hopefully. Uh-oh. Uh, 15. The 15. other one was a four. I saw it in D&D &D mm. Beyond. Oh, yeah, I calm. It's never been more revealing. It's never been more <laughs> revealing. I'm afraid to say, as you assail in the levels, the DCs do go up. Anybody who got a 16 or lower, you are going to start by taking uh, 15 points of bludgeoning damage. As uh -huh. you were not fully in the room, so you avoid the uh, you know very devastating kind of damage that would have been caused had you been actually in Lord Miron's chamber fully. Uh, before this was triggered um but you do kind of get hit by a scattering of boulders and rocks and collapsed timber beams uh in the short corridor and sort of by the entrance as the ceiling kind of collapses around you i have um, a question yes would i still be raging from my previous rage during this collapse i think so so you can take half of that uh, i also oh, have a question i wasn't even asking because i wanted to unstable backlash because why not oh there you go Anna, you had a question? I have written down that I have 10 temporary hit points. I feel like that yes. was something that you did, Mika. You. Okay, did so that. I only have to take that off and five. Yes, that is correct. Hooray. You Thanks, well. Mika. Uh, Nate, do you want to roll your unstable backlash? Yes. An intangible okay. spirit, which looks like no! a thing for <laughs> No! A piece of... <laughs> uh. There's no hostile creatures, are there? Well, this is the thing. So what does it say? Is it appears next to a creature you can see? What's the what's the wording on the civil backlash? Within and then I'll set the scene with of it. one creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you. Okay. In that case, I would like you to make a perception check for me with disadvantage, and then I will describe the scene, and then that will determine if Clive uh, sees this creature. Um, okay. So I think Agnes with the passive perception is going to see something. So the, okay. With so disadvantage, that... though. Yep, 22. 22. Yeah. So, Dang. Agnes and Clive are perhaps the only two that actually see uh, something else in this room. For Tarkle and, uh, and Azara, what you guys see is as the room completely collapses in, uh, the open sky, the night sky of Cormir, uh, is kind of filtering in. You can see that this Lord Miron's chamber was built sort of underneath the ruins that the greater battle between your forces and these thorns, their sort of uh, corrupted military, is taking place. And you can hear shouts and cries of the battle coming in from, from above. 
um and it's kind of the air the the fallen stone the timbers there is fine dust that's all been kicked up and it's actually quite hard to see anything of any sort of uh detail um because in this kind of shadowy gloom and all the smoke kind of being uh all the dust sorry being kicked up uh you you fail to quite see anything more than the just rubble this pile of giant pile of rubble that has collapsed in the center that now leads up almost like a sort of a giant mound that leads up to this huge open sort of broken roof ceiling uh that leads out into the outer mountains for agnes and clive the two of you see that there is something else within that cloud of dust as the room collapsed you saw the briefest flash of draconic magic and you now see a large a very very large claw kind of gripping onto stone um, kind of blending in with the shadows created by the moonlight spilling in from the from the from the hole but kind of shrouding the back area of this very large opulent noble chamber um, blending in with the shadows you see a huge uh, draconic serpentine body and that is when the tiny flump for pixie appears <laughs> next to them um, so Nate take us away <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, the flump is absolutely going to uh, appear next to whatever I just saw. Scre appears <laughs> screaming as they always do. All right, so it is a dexterity saving throw, which is... Oh, oh it's never been easier. It's never been easier. It's never been it's easier. Never been easier. <laughs> Where is it? DC. Features and traits, normally. Features and traits. It's been easier. Uh... I, okay, I want to say it was 16, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll go with 16 for now, and then okay. uh, if you're really struggling to find it, I can, I'll can. i pop in and see if I can find it uh, when I get a second. Uh, 16, but we'll go, we'll act with 16, because I don't think it's going to matter if it's one or two points higher or lower. Um, hmm. Can you roll, what's the damage for it? It is, let me roll that, it's 1d6 force. Whoop, that would be three three points of damage sure there is the flump explodes and in that flash of light maybe tarkle and mika suddenly you now become aware that there is something else in this large space hunched up coiled up recoiling uh you know being stealthy although not kind of purposely trying to hide itself just its very nature makes it blend in with the shadows as you hear uh, a kind of rumbling draconic voice <clears throat> what a little pest i was hoping that they would not uh, see me no matter it is time that i put mother's uh, mission to the test <laughs> mother's mission As a black dragon <laughs> pulls themselves uh, and that is where we are going to roll initiative having avoided the surprise round the dragon was about to try and Whoa. <laughs> wow. uh, flump, flump, thanks flump, to flump, clive's flump, flump. i'm getting a Hell flump yeah. tattoo oh my god <laughs> <laughs> if any other result it would not have helped but uh, <laughs> uh azara what are we looking at for initiative 13 13 and then tar cow 19 19 all righty so taco you are the first one to react down here this chamber is very very large it's maybe sort of like 80 feet um uh, sort of long and you know you know 50 60 feet wide full of sort of like now broken uh opulence you know all the furniture all the nice bookcases all of that's been destroyed and now in the center there is this almost giant uh mound of broken stone that sort of almost leads up to a uh this open hole that leads out into the ruins above you can hear the sounds of battle calling in on the other side of the mound which maybe forms sort of a 30 foot high 40 foot high pile in the center you see the serpentine shape of this uh black dragon okay i am going to so he said mother this is willow song's brother that's that's what tarkle is assuming with that sentence 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I will. If that's what you want to assume, then that's what I will let you assume. Wow, in laws, man. D dude, they're the worst. Am I right? <laughs> um, I think that Tarkle would just uh, get to business, and he would grab Epilogue, and I think he's going to try to cast disintegration, disintegrate, rather. Okay. Yeah. Epilogue absolutely. is such a freaking cool name, man. So I know. good. So sick. Epilogue. I was pretty so, pleased with that one. I was yeah. Yeah. So one. good. Um, so he takes out, and then I think he just points the. It says you're pointing finger, but can I? Tarkle holds the epilogue, like you know. Yeah, the point. The, yeah, yeah, and it runs the, all from his spell. finger along the blade. Yeah. Yeah, then, I always imagined that it would be the point of the blade that the beam mm -hmm. comes out of, like rather than the uh, rather than your hand, because the it's spell is. Exactly. I'm not casting weapon, it. Right? True. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, and then he has to make a Dex saving throw. Uh, sure. Okay. Dex eighteen. Dex eighteen saving throw. Uh, that is going to be a 27. Heck, As dude. The, this green beam uh, fires from the blade, and you almost hear sort of in Sylvan Tarkle, you hear like, as it kind of projects out. Um, and I don't know if Tarkle speaks Sylvan or not, but... Uh, uh, no, audience, no, he doesn't. Oh, then I won't tell you what it does. I don't tell you what it means. Um, but you hear this kind of whispered voice as the beam fires out, and you watch as the dragon just whips its head to the side, almost sensing the kind of danger the spell presents, and yeah, the beam just kind of hits the wall behind him. It does, however, disintegrate a huge chunk of the wall behind him, carving into the very earth, and now you actually see that there's maybe a, uh, a semicircular cylinder that goes through to the outer edge of the wall as well, almost like creating like a long tunnel through the, the stone of the uh, previous underground keep. Um, just Those blind. whispers in Sylvan, can I hear them? Uh, if you would be next to Tarkle, sure, I'll say you can, yeah. Yeah, because I speak Sylvan. Yeah, it's, it's basically just, uh, it, it's all different words that mean the same thing. They all basically mean end you know, finals, Ooh. you know, like conclusion. Like cool. it's all these different Sylvan words for wow. endings. Uh, wow. And it seems to, as as the beam flies out, it it, it speaks those, it whispers them in the That's so cool. But yeah. it, it does, didn't hurt it does the dragon. Nothing. It does nothing, right? Unfortunately, on a, on a miss, save. disintegrate, because it's such a powerful thing when it does yeah, hit on a miss. Uh, it just annihilates the, the wall behind and does create this thing. But I would say that now the creature, there is no real shadow for it to hide in. You know, the, the moonlight from this tunnel behind it is backlighting the dragon, preventing it from using its stealth uh, to its advantage in this current space. Okay, and when I do that, with since I'm since yeah. I'm a, a dual wielding boy now, can I use my kiss of silver? Or since that's a spell, I've never I can right? Yeah. So, uh, no, actually, that's a good point. So, casting a spell um, to use your offhand, you have to take the attack action, and then you gotcha. can use your okay. offhand to bring the spell. Um, and oh, can I? Can I? Something that I would I I would I might allow, but I'd need to have a think about it. But yeah, no stress. Um, can I take like a hide? Can I do a little dash? You said this room is like eighty feet. Is there a spot for me to bonus action okay. hide? There's definitely, like, you can basically, what you would need to hide behind is this giant column of rock. So, like, for the sake of, because we're doing this theater of the mind, right? Imagine mm -hmm. that you've got this enormous sort of, like, 80-foot-long space. Uh, it's quite wide. But the only real important terrain feature is this sort of giant 30-foot-wide column of stone rubble in the middle, um, which almost acts like a slope up to the ceiling. And um, where is where is the body that I can see in... Like the in dragon to is that. on the other side. So if you guys are at one end of the room, the dragon is on the other side of this this large mound. It was kind so of in order to hide from there. the dragon, I have to get closer to the dragon. <laughs> technically, yes, because yes, you need to be. At the yeah, base let's of go this for it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'll stealthily do that if I. Yeah. If I... So you basically run run to the middle, um, and then you try and press yourself up against like this uh, pile of stones, like Bilbo in in the Hobbit, <laughs> uh, hiding in the giant piles of gold. Um, what did you get in your stealth check? Just out of 31. 31. 31. With a 31, you just hear the dragon. I know where you are, little whelp. How would he tell me that? Not <laughs> good enough, I'm afraid. Ugh. He called I you a whelp. See That's what crazy. Your sister sees in such a wretched creature. Uh, and with that, is that the end of your turn, Tarkle? Yeah, it's the end of my turn, Mark. Thank you. That's the end <laughs> of your turn. At the end of your turn, Tarkle, the dragon is going to take a legendary action. And you hear in Draconic, they begin to cast a spell. And uh, they are going to target. So this is going to be... 
Uh, all of you guys, every single one of you, I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Uh -oh. oh, thank goodness. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, the rock doth more. 19. Well, well. 19 we have from Agnes. 24. We have Whoa. Mika, sorry. Hmm? Oh, 24. 24. Uh, Tarkle. 12. And then Clive. Powerful, strong five. Five. Uh, anybody who got less than six, 16 or less, uh, unfortunately, uh, less you are affected by the Bane spell, which means you have to subtract a D4 from all of your attack rolls and saving throws, I'm afraid. For how long? Till I'm dead? Uh, <laughs> bu 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 until this creature loses concentration. Oh, um, okay. It's going to get hit. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And fail. So, yeah, and you f you feel this kind of shadowy gloom <laughs> bind itself to you and slow down your movements and make you weaker and uh, kind of affect you. However, both Agnes and Azara, you manage to... Uh, maybe, Agnes, it's the light of your mantle, Azara, like with a burst of sort of like your, your sorcerer's power, you kind of prevent this, this gloom from taking hold of you um, uh, in your force of personality. Uh, that Wait. Was Yes. Nathan I have Sharp. unused inspiration. Can I use it on this? You would need to say before you rolled, I'm afraid. Man. Dang you it! Have to be more on top of it. You're I'm sad with me, it. boy. Come on, but we're sad boys. You can say, remember, you've got it. Remember, you've got it. Before Batman. <laughs> Why before Batman? Oh my God, Bane. Oh my God. Oh, the Bane spell. No one can understand you in the cinema anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. I was born in the fair world. <laughs> <laughs> you merely adopted Actually. It. <laughs> right, God. anyway. Tarkal, end of, that was the end of your turn. Now it is the dragon's go. Gets all of its legendary actions back. Uh, no, it doesn't. It, 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 <laughs> uh -uh. it does. Uh, it will stalk <laughs> up and it kind of coils itself like smog. It kind of coils itself around this giant stone column. Lining, uh, lining clive agnes and azara who are clumped together um as it brings its giant mouth open and you begin to see foaming acidic spittle begin uh, to build up nice. uh and I'd like you to can see that th this dragon is particularly long and thin uh it does it still has like the wings and the scales and the claws of like a very kind of typical fancy dragon but i'd say its body has got that more serpentine uh, sort of like um, from like uh, Japan and Asia, you might see kind of that long serpenty coiling body. Um, very, very long with a kind of very wicked barbed tail. Um, and yeah, this creature is going to open its mouth and it is going to use its acid breath on Azara, Agnes, and Clive uh, first. And then it's going to make two claw attacks against Tarkle. I. Mm, um, mm, uh, objection. <laughs> but on what grounds? Uh, Approach the bar. Fun. Doesn't seem fun. <laughs> Um, oh, oh. <laughs> sustained. What is it they say in your court? Sustained? I don't know what it is to basically say Sustained no. means it's, 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 a, it's a go. So let's, oh, okay. uh, let's object, the other all right? One. <laughs> denied or whatever denied, it is. Denied, yes. Yeah, objection denied. Uh, so I need you guys to make dexterity saving throws. Again, Clive, you do see this coming. You will have danger sense advantage. All also, right. I want to use a reaction to oh. cast absorb elements oh, at oh, the oh. fourth level. Absolutely Whoa. you can. Absolutely Look at me finally using the spell for yeah, what it's so good for. Yeah, you get for. resistance to acid. And I'm assuming. I, um, let's see. I capture some of the incoming energy, lessening its effect on me and storing it for my next melee attack. You have resistance to the triggering damage type until the start of your next turn. Also, the first time you hit with a melee attack on your next turn, the target takes an extra 1d6 damage of the triggering type and the spell ends. Mm -hmm. and if you um, cast, so actually... I would say unless you want to boost the melee damage that this is going to give, it's not worth casting it at a higher level. Um, right, you right, right, right. at a higher level, you get more ass damage. I will tell you because I think that Agnes would know this. As this thing is immune to acid damage. Like if you do okay. acid damage back to it, it's not going to take. So I'm just that. using it to lessen the damage to me then. I would just cast it at first level, like okay. honestly, because then you get the resistance, but you don't. You, you know, the extra melee damage isn't going to be. Yeah, because I don't really use melee anyway. I didn't yeah, realize it was exactly. melee only no, until I read fine. it. Um, but the first level is still great to get that resistance. That's going to give you half damage. And then depending on what you save, you might also take even less damage. So you said dex save, right? Dexterity saving throws, please. Any other reactions or anything before you go or as you guys are making these? Uh, Tarkal screams when he sees this happening. That's my reaction. Oh. All right. You've used your reaction to scream. Noted. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, That's gonna bite him in the ass. <laughs> be like, oh, do you have your oh, you're using reaction? Oh. I, meant, I meant he reacted, and I didn't say he uses reaction. Screaming is so. a free action. Come on. Screaming is a free That's action. Fair. That's yeah, fair. That's fine. Right. So deck saves. Eighteen. Agnes. Eighteen from Azara. Seventeen. Seventeen from Agnes. Let's say I rolled a nine. <laughs> okay. Let's say that. hypothetically. Yes. What would that mean? That would mean you fail. Yes. What would that mean in numbers? <laughs> well, let's find out. Uh, do would you like to take the the standard damage, or would you like me to roll the damage? Oh, and this is all of you. All, all, so, if I if I understand, it was a seventeen, uh, a nineteen. Did you say? Or was it seventeen? What? what, what I was seventeen. Azara? I was eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, okay. Azara is going to take half damage. You successfully saved. Uh, take I'm half taking damage. no damage. Excuse you. With the oh, dancing winds. Oh, that's right. You do get uh, you get the benefit. I can't remember. Does that have limited uses? I can't remember if it does. It does not. I just now take no have damage on a dex throw. Yeah, that's fine. What? Right. That's so cool. Yeah, I gotta so go. Azara, wow, wings. Azara's wings, like literally, you lift up into the air, kind of almost like this wind pulls you into a a ballet dancer's pirouette as you kind of avoid this spray of acid as it collapses. Unfortunately for Agnes and Clive, they are taking the full oh, damage. No. Agnes, you're half it because of the resistance. Uh, so as Clive is taking the full amount, I'm going to give Nate the choice. Do you want me to roll or do you want to take the uh, the pre-done damage? Let's roll, baby. Let's roll, baby. Always. Always roll. Take I a chance. It. It's a lot of twos. I think you, yep, you, hey. you, that worked out well. So it's going to be 36 acid damage for Clive, oh. which becomes half to 18, I believe, yeah. for uh, Agnes. So um, I would like to unstable backlash, if we yes, may. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> got to do something. Uh, You've got to do it. You don't have any acid resistance, do you, um, Clive? No. No. For, uh, for Agnes, for the purposes of yours, after this, the acid, like the spell, the absorb elements, does help you avoid some of this damage, that resistance immediately ends when you get hit by this breath weapon. So the acid is so strong, it actually burns through that resistance and negates it on you. You, you lose that until the start of your next turn. You can't Dang. gain acid resistance. So. Huh. Okay. Uh, and then Unstable Backlash, let's go. Game. Whenever a creature hits you with an attack roll before your rage ends, they take 1d6 force damage. Wicked. There we go. Perfect. Ah. All right. So that was the breath weapon. Uh, and then two claws come down onto Tarkle, uh, who it senses. It can just, it seem, whether it's smelling you or sensing you, Tarkle, you know, you're pretty sure that you were really well hidden from its visual, um, you know, kind of senses, but it still knows exactly where you are. Uh, um, question. Yes, please. High level as combats, a, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I have a thing that says as a bonus action, I can choose to grant a creature of my choice within 30 feet of you the ability to use their reaction mm -hmm. to move at, up to their speed without provoking opportunity attacks. That would have to be on your turn as a bonus action. Yes, this is on the dragon's turn. Uh, does a 20 hit you, Tarkle? Just barely. And does a... What's the next one? Does a 28 hit you? Oh, that one? Yeah, that one does. Clean. Does. First attack is going to do uh, 11 points of slashing damage. Okay. Second attack as the claw comes down. Very low rolls. Nine points of slashing damage. I rolled terribly. Uh, as these two claws, and you're kind of dodging to the side, deflecting with epilogue, but these blows kind of like maybe scrape your arms or tear your, your armor and cloak, wearing down your energy uh, as the dragon finishes their turn. Uh, ba -ba 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 bam uh oh actually it's going to use its reaction uh when it hits a creature with a, an attack that deals acid damage or reduces a creature to zero hit points it hit both agnes and uh clive with acid damage uh, it can force one creature to make a wisdom saving throw hi clive <laughs> i'd like you, you got this saving throw, please and you have minus d4 to this because of the bane spell no oh. okay so i i crit the hey. save, so minus one because of my wisdom. wisdom, and now then one d four. Yep, and there's no crit success uh, on saves, I'm afraid. Okay, so seventeen total. Seventeen is just barely what you Ooh. needed to pass oh. this. Um, so as, as as the acid kind of coats you, 
you hear these like whispers in your mind as the dragon is like, you are weak. You cannot defeat me. And fuck free that. Free while you can. Blah, blah, blah. Not listening. <laughs> yeah, and this, Clive just hears like, like, uh, I was thinking uh, of something else. There you go. Uh, that's it. That's uh, That was its reaction. So we go to Clive of the Wild Mane. Uh, the dragon is sort of in the middle of the room, uh, about 40 feet, uh, you know, 35 feet probably from your, your position. Uh, Tarkal is being ravaged by these claws. It's coiled around this giant stone mound. What would you like to do, Clive? I would like to... Uh, this thing is... How, how close am I to this land? Uh, th about 35, 40 feet uh, to the middle. It's it's huge, so it takes up like the hmm. entire sort of like thirty foot mound in the middle. It's just wrapped around. Like as long as you can get to the the stone mound, you're you're within melee range. Okay, then uh, I mean I have a dragon sword, so I feel like I'm gonna use a dragon sword. You do, and like as you are charging towards it, you almost feel Ebon Scorn sort of in your hand, like it's on fire. Like you feel this burning desire that this thing wants to taste dragon blood. That seems like something you've got to address. <laughs> I'll swing anyway. So number one, uh, I'm raging too. I would like to recklessly. Yes, please. Get advantage <laughs> on your attack roll. I might get advantage on attacks against. Yeah. Okay, so the first one to hit. Well, okay, so it, that's a 30 to hit, but that let is. me do the advantage. Oh, and uh, don't forget your minus note. D yeah, if, if you roll low, then uh, we'll see if the D4. Yeah, Whoa. that's fine. Don't worry about the D4. You're going to hit yep. regardless. Cool. So let's... Uh, okay, so I add... I always forget. I have my slashing against this guy, and because I'm raging, I add three? Whatever your rage bonus to damage to rage is, and then because the ebb and scorn, you also roll an additional... Uh, I think it says in the item, but that should be... Uh, I think I updated it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. 1d8. Yeah, an extra d8 slashing damage. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the initial roll, slashing. This is a 2. So 9 nine total on that. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. Where's my rage? Plus the 3 from your rage, so it goes up to 12. Mm -hmm. And then another d8. Then another d8. Roll. That's a six. So 18 points of damage. Yeah. Um, and as the blade bites in, you actually hear the dragon like hiss. Like, ah! As the blade seems to cut through its dragon scales uh, <gasps> nice. super easily, tearing at the flesh, leaving like a scalding wound. I'm going to do it again. Right. <laughs> Wait, does he lose concentration? Is Bane done? That's a good question. Uh, Ooh, nice, so Shady. You dealt 18 points of damage, so half that, the DC would still just be 10. Uh, the concentration remains. The Bane is still... Hit him again. <laughs> well, I'd say 21 to hit. Can you uh, roll the I... D4 for yeah, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> we'll roll the D4, and that's a 1. Uh, so it goes down to 20. Still hits, even yes. with the Bane sort of sapping some of your strength. Your blows driven forth strike the dragon so 10 plus the additional d8 what if i rolled higher that's a three so 13 is that plus your rage three 16 16 we'll get there um excellent so yeah these two blows carving through the dragon scales ebb and scorn almost feeling in your hand like it's on fire um but plunging through into the creature uh, is that the end of your turn, Clive? Uh, I believe so. Do I have a bonus? Uh, no. Nope. On that hit, does he lose concentration? <laughs> Thank, no, it's a really good reminder because I, I, it's so easy for me to forget. That's no, yeah, threat. it's. I'm just very. I'm. I'm feeling very sad and sorrowful about this D4, and I'm hoping. Yeah, no. Can... The, the 16 damage. The DC is half damage or 10, whichever is highest. The DC is 10. Unfortunately, still succeeds. Okay. Um, it, it. You will need keep remembering deal, though. It'll happen. You I will. will either need to deal a large amount of damage, or I have to roll a one uh, for that to fail. So. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay. This is a dragon. Uh, Clive. End of turn. End of turn. At the end of your turn, it's going to use a legendary action to make a tail attack against you, Clive. No. Because you, it has advantage against you because of Just... Reckless. No. No. It's true. Uh, 22 to hit. Just barely. 
you are going to take. Whomp, 15 points of bludgeoning damage. So you can half that to 7 points of bludgeoning damage because you're raging. But can you make a strength saving throw for me, please? Yes, I can. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. Oh. 12. You are pushed. You are knocked. The tail kind of whips into you like a, like a whip, crack of a whip. It knocks you 15 feet away and knocks you prone. So it kind of sends you skidding back towards Zara and Agnes on your back. <laughs> Scraping along and the road. I, I can't even punish these dice because they're not <laughs> They're digital. Fungible. They're not real. <laughs> they're not real. D&D uh, Beyond, it's never been more frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, physical dice can be just the same. It doesn't matter. It's yeah, but you can't put digital that. dice in dice jail. <laughs> they should sure. make uh, that thing. Yeah, they, they should, they should oh. make a little jail that like, you can put uh, your dice put in. Put your dice It'll in. It'll feel mm -hmm. satisfying. Evening yeah. Star will only ask for 15% of that deal. <laughs> all, all <laughs> dice jail sales. Uh, Azara Mithras, it is your turn. Did someone say a lot of damage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I've been thinking about this this whole this whole time. I have a plan. Mm -hmm. I would like to use my movement to get within melee range okay. of this dragon. Yes. But I'm Easily going done. to bonus action choose myself to not get an opportunity attack on me. Oh, I see. So you want to use your uh, newfound boon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New Foon Boon. New I Foon to, Boon. I need to get close to this man, so I need to use my New Foon Boon. Uh, and as a bonus action, you can choose to either grant each creature of your choice within 30 feet of you, including yourself, the ability to use their reaction to move uh, up to their speed without provoking the tax opportunity to force any number of creatures within 30 feet of you to make a dexterity save against your thing. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So that you that's the ability you want to use, right? The very last one. Because this is, as a bonus action, you can choose to either grant each creature of your choice within 30 feet of you. So you could allow the whole party. I to would get like the whole party to have this ability. <laughs> so anybody who's got their reaction, you can use your reaction. Keep in mind that that means you. You won't have a reaction for like subsequent absorb elements or anything like that to yes. make basically a free move you don't provoke opportunity attacks or anything yes do um, i still get this even though i've used my reaction for this round if you have if you've already used your reaction for this round then you do not have a reaction to spend so you because i have to... right for absorb elements i believe so because yeah, yeah you use that at the top of the round it's and i haven't had a turn math, yet man it's really yeah. fun yeah you've already used that you've not had a go again yet so, so yes, thanks you, but i can't you Aww. can't don't get um, close to them yeah okay um, and then you're using that instead of the dealing damage ability, right, Mika? Because there's a, there's an or option, or you can force any number of creatures to make a same throw to take damage. Yes, I, I'm using You want to give uh... your buddies a chance. So the idea of this, by the way, is like, as Azara is like basically dancing with the wind, like her wings and her movements are almost emanating this beautiful operatic dance, winds begin to coalesce around all of your companions, and it's almost like it's guiding you not to dance, but to like, basically let the wind take you and move you up to a certain range of feet as Azara performs this beautiful dance uh, in, in the air. So, um, Tarkle and Clive, would either of you like to move? Oh, it would be right now as a reaction or not? Yes. It's just, oh. it is right now as a reaction. You get to move your speed. So for Clive, this would be half your speed because you'd be crawling. You'd be like on your floor like, wee. <laughs> Wait, it's it's, wait reaction, it has to be right, right now? I thought it was just giving them the option in general. No, it is as a reaction. They use their movement. They use their reaction oh. to move. As a reaction right to this now. spell, this And that would be the same for you, Azara. Okay. You'd be using your, your, your movement to... Move. I was not clear on the fact no, that it was right. at the moment right that's now. Fine. Do you want to save that then? And I, will save that. Okay. I will save that. I will save that for when it is like direly needed. Sure, cool. Um, then that changes my plan, but that is okay. I, you got loads of new cool new stuff. I do, I do. I am going to. Oh, I still have my draconic spirit out, by the way. He's still kind of vibing, so he goes after sure. me. It doesn't have very long. Maybe a couple more, a couple of rounds. Okay, that works. But I will, as of right now, uh, cast light at the fifth level. Okay. Sixth level. And this is a. What am I doing on this? Sixth level. It's a con sixteen. Con sixteen saving throw. I love me some blight. <laughs> Twenty-eight, I'm afraid. Twenty-eight. This, this dragon is extremely <laughs> tough. What am I playing? Dungeons and Dragons is ridiculous. I, I, also, I also rolled an eighteen, so 
that uh, guttural yeah, like what? exceptionally <laughs> tough it's it's body uh full of draconic power um it will still do half damage i believe well i rolled a 40 so it takes 20 points of necrotic damage ha! 20 points of necrotic uh wow, and which triggers it to take a constitution saving throw half of 20 is 10. did not roll a one it succeeds on Fuck! the concentration god um, mother of mother of god uh, uh but yes so the blight sort of tries to draw you know life energy and liquid from the creature right <laughs> little sorceress please uh you just hear it's kind of crooning a draconic voice echo uh as a free action azara is gonna just flip him the middle finger um <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> and let's see so you, so we're gonna. Con you are still next to Agnes because you didn't yes, do the bonus. Yes, I didn't anything. do. I didn't. You and Agnes, you're flying sort of like about, you know, a few feet because there's still a roof where you guys are. Yeah, like, I'm still like hovering, like, but I'm like right there. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool, 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 cool. I'm not gonna do any bonus actions. I'm gonna save everything right now, and I'm going to let my draconic, my draconic boy go. Send your draconic spirit in. Uh, technically, spirit. if the draconic spirit was with you, it would have had to have made the save against the acid breath. Can you just do that for me quick? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Dex uh, save. Uh, uh, Let's uh, see. Uh, Where are his saves? They should be on his little stat block. On uh, a stat block? Okay. Um, summon you draconic spirit. Spell. Uh, you might need to just keep a physical record of his hit points. I have all of his hit points um, on a post-it note over here. Dex is plus two. Is that also for his save? That's probably, if he doesn't have a specific save, then yeah, it just okay. uses dex. Yeah, just Dope. plus two, unfortunately. 19 plus two is 21. 21, it's gonna take half damage, so it would've taken uh, 18. 18, what is 60 minus 18? 42. 42? Yeah. Look at this boy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, see, this, with is, the this is great. Um, Dope, okay, so he has 42 hit points. Or, yeah, left, dope. Yep. And then he gets to make his attacks. Yes, he has... Agnes, attacks. you are next, by the way, if you want to start thinking. So, uh, there will, oh, there will be ready. a legendary action in between. 26, so does that hit? 26 does hit. Dope. Yep. Um, so then 1d6 plus 10. That is 11 points of piercing damage. And then he also gets a breath weapon. Okay. Wait, half the spell's level rounded down. How many attacks do I get? Three hits. I get three hits. Yay! I wrote that down. Yay, Mika. Okay. Um, eight Yay, plus Mika. eleven is nineteen. Is a nineteen <laughs> hit? Uh, nineteen just barely hits. Yes. Dope. That's another D six plus ten. That's fifteen points of piercing uh, damage. Yeah. And then one more. Uh, sixteen does not hit. So he hits with. Does not. Two. Um. So his breath weapon, the dragon exhales destructive energy in a 30 foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC, which okay. my spell save DC is 11. Dexterity, yeah. Um, and 2d6 damage of a type the dragons has resistance to of a choice. I summoned a... Uh, I believe I it was summon? lightning. Lightning, yeah. Yeah, because it's uh, your default is generally lightning. I can't yeah. remember that might be different, but it certainly would I think be acid, I, I, which is going to be the yeah. main difference here. Um, um, no, I summoned of... I summoned an acid dragon or a poison dragon because I thought we were going to be fighting. That's right, Willow poison. Song, so it was a poison damage. Um, uh, I will say uh, on the DC, uh, it was a thirteen on the deck save. Oh, that's so close! All right, but he takes that's three, plus, so half of nine. Half of nine would be four. So he takes four poison damage. Do okay. any of those knock his concentration? That's a great question. Uh, they None of them do enough damage to make it higher than a 10, but I do have to make for two attacks and then the breath weapon. Uh, first one succeeds. Second one succeeds. Draw a one, Mark. That's basically what you're hoping for. And then the last yeah. one was a natural 20, so at least you've made me waste <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, the concentration on Bane remains. Uh, as the dragon, you can see that as the dragon warrior is kind of hitting this creature with the with its weapon, its kind of conjured weapon, uh, it doesn't seem to be as effective as penetrating it as oh. things like Evan's Scorn and stuff is. Um, but it is still, you know, taking damage. It's, it's cutting into the creature. Um, you can see the dragon is mildly annoyed at this point. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry. End of turn, Azara? End of turn. 
as a legendary action, it Fuck. looks at you specifically. No. Uh, sorcerer's pest. Let darkness cloud you. Can you make a constitution saving throw, please? Sure am. Ah, oh, I'm not bad at that. 19. So you, yep, you pass just barely as a blink, uh, a black inky darkness tries to obscure your vision and you kind of let your eyes burst with lightning and prevent it from clouding over um, as blindness, dark, uh, deafness tries to conjure around you. Uh, but it, it resists. Uh, and then we go to Agnes. I have such a good wombo combo planned, and I just want to tell you guys what I'm trying to do because the likelihood of me actually getting to do it is so low whenever <laughs> I plan these things, but it's so cool. Tell us the whole <laughs> plan so we, I, at least we can know how cool it is. Yeah. So, you know, I have my new toy, the Mantle of Embered Ashes, which is this flaming cloak, right? And it has charges. So I can spend four charges to cast the spell Immolation, which basically sets the target on fire and does tons of damage for a long time. So it'd be a really good get on this dragon, but it's a dex save. So I am a little worried that I wouldn't be able to hit it and then I would have wasted this really important thing. Also, everyone else is having trouble getting spell damage in on it. So I'm gonna use Galathir the Guiding Light, my cool elven bow, to use a spell guiding shot, which is a special arrow I have for that bow, mm -hmm. to hit, hopefully, the dragon. And then that would mean that for one minute, any spell attacks made against the creature have advantage and the target has disadvantage on any dexterity saving throws. Ooh. So I would set Very myself up for a really good next turn and in between everybody else would have advantage on their spell. Stuff. Gotta, hope, gotta hope that arrow hits. That's the main yeah, thing. Yeah, I really, really, really good do. Wombo combo. But it's a great combo. I love yeah. it. I really uh, wish I had guidance. <laughs> yeah. Or so, bless. <laughs> back, so you're going to pull out Galathir, the guiding light. You're going to yeah. draw back the silvery bow and load this magical arrow of starlight. Dear D&D &D gods, <laughs> please let me have this. Bless, blessed Chris Perkins and Jeremy Crawford. <laughs> Lend me your aid. Yes. All right, here we In go. An hour of need. I hope it works for you, man. I do too. I rolled 19. It's dead on its AC. It Woo! Hits. Wow. <laughs> uh, so there is, uh, as part of the ranged attack, so you do get to do damage, normal damage yeah, as well. Yeah, just a little. Uh, a little chip damage. But the main thing is this effect, which uh, yeah. we'll get to in a second. It does nine damage. And it is a magic weapon. Damage. And it's not fire damage, right? So I don't get to do any of my extra stuff. I do, however, have candor summoned, if I remember correctly, from last time. Yeah. yeah. Um, is I'm trying to keep it in the theater of my mind, but is anybody mm -hmm. in a situation that they need to be removed from right now? Like anyone in melee that needs to not be in melee or anything so like let that? Me, I'll break it down for you, right? Like anytime you guys want, just tell me and I'll break down like the rough scene. So currently we have in the middle of this large chamber big stone pile like pile of rocks that forms like a kind of slope the dragon is coiled around that tarkle is within melee range of the dragon clive is about 15 feet prone away from the dragon uh, on the ground and then you and uh, azara are about 40 feet away from the dragon sort of in the little doorway that led into this room basically at the beginning of the chamber and then above you you have like above the hole where the dragon and tarkle and clive are is this giant hole that leads up into the open space of the uh, of the battle above you does Tar tarkle do you look okay like you look like you're intentionally trying to be there yeah tarkle looks focused on the dragon like blade okay. in hand yeah uh, and how far away from the dragon is Clive? Uh, 15 feet. <laughs> All right. Hey, Clive, you want to lift? As I'm like on my, on my back, like a turtle. Yeah. Kander's just going to like fly down underneath him and go poof, and explode Clive <laughs> in fire and transport him. Like, do you want to be on the dragon's back? Yeah, I'm just gonna drop him on the dragon's back because I, like like, I feel like I feel like that's that what Clive seems, wants. That, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, the dragon is a smart enough creature that as soon as he kind of feels Clive, like especially because Clive's not clambering on, like he will just move his body and Clive sort of like you know kind of will fall onto the giant stone mound. But yeah, he initially begins sort of appearing on the dragon's back, and then probably on the dragon's turn, it's gonna shake him off or try to at least anyway. 
Um, cool. But yeah, so Kandor appears there. Boof, boof. Uh, and he appears on the, dra on the dragon's back. Sure. Ah! <laughs> Still technically prone, though, Clive. Uh, you get teleported <laughs> on the ground. So you're like lying That doesn't on the stand him back. up? Nope. Oh, Aww. this is much better. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, end of turn, Agnes. Yes. Quick question. Mark, can oh. you roll a one real quick on that bow that hit you? <laughs> oh, sure. Hey, man, I appreciate you uh, being so on it with these. I just, I I just wanted to easy. be gone. 10 plus 10, 20. Okay. Would you say this is the bane of Shady's existence right uh, now? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, uh. Um, at the end of Agnes's turn, I'm going to use the dragon's last legendary action. And just, he kind of senses Clive on his back and he looks over at you, Agnes. Uh -oh. like, oh, thank you, my dear. You've made this much easier. And he just reaches one giant claw up onto his back, like this long serpentine body almost coiling so he can reach as he is going to cast Inflict Wounds on Clive, which is a melee spell attack, which means he has advantage uh, on the... Oh, level. no. Oh, he's got one D6 of force damage coming his way. <laughs> well, <laughs> is that on attack rolls or is that whenever he uh, deals damage to you? Because this technically is, uh, technically is an attack roll. Uh, whenever he hits you with an attack, with an attack roll. Yeah, yeah, that, then that uh, will work. Yeah. Uh, so let me just find his spell casting here. Does a uh, nineteen hit you, Clive? No, it doesn't. No. Nah. Oh, the armor and shields that Damn. you wounded. Uh, oh, twenty one. up as this draconic claw, charged with necrotic energy, sort of tries to grip around you, and you manage to like hold it off, feeling this kind of life-sucking energy uh, around it. Ah, you cursed thing. Uh, as it's trying to reach and grip you and eventually gives up. Um, very good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, sadly, because Teamwork. it didn't hit you, I don't think your force damage thing goes off. Or is it no. say when you are... Yeah, I think it's when, it's when I'm hit, so... Yeah. All right. Uh, then in that case, that is at the end of Angus's round. So we jump to Tarkle Crown Silver. Okay, okay. Don't forget, you. everyone has advantage on spell attacks versus the dragon now. Yes. The, the, it has the this fact, advantage on dex. It mm -hmm. has this advantage on dex. Is that for how long? Just until it fails? Or is that. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's a really okay. good say, thing I got that it, hit. Things like the spell magic would probably remove this effect, kind of similar to a lot of other things as well. If uh, right. if it gets like a spell magic or something. Okay. I think. If that... it knows what it is, it might not know what this thing you've done to it is. It probably can never hit, actually. There's no point in trying again. I'm just going to... Uh, Tarkle's going to run up and try to just slice and dice at the dragon mm -hmm. uh, with epilogue. We have an ally within five feet because Clive is there now. So. <laughs> Laying on his back. You, Clive. <laughs> uh, that's a 14 plus 11, which is 25, but then I have to subtract the D4, D4, right? Yeah. Which I rolled a 1. So 20, 11, 4, 14, 11, 25, 24. 24 to hit. 24 hits. Okay. I'm imagining... I'm, like, you know how, I don't know, my dog does this. She's so round that when she's trying to get up, she's like yeah. flailing and rolling around. Yeah. That's what Clive's doing. Yeah. Yeah, just... He's a chubby boy. And all the uh, armor, you know, it's hard to get up. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. So, Mark, in this yes. description, right, I roll a D6 plus 6 to do some damage, right? So that's going to be 10 I... damage. Why are you rolling a D6 plus, what are you doing here? <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, I have an ally within range. Don't I get more? Yeah, you get your normal sneak. So you do the normal weapon damage. Which is a D6 you... plus six for epilogue. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then you get your sneak attack damage. But my question is that in the description of this blade, it says that yeah. uh, anyone that touches it, but the creature attuned to it gets cut and it deals 2D12 necrotic. Yeah, that's that's more like a like if somebody tries to like grab the blade, not when you make attacks and stuff like so that. So you're like, telling me that yes. someone accidentally grabbing my blade does more damage than me taking it and thrusting it. Well, because the the blade has like a like a supernatural thing that when people who aren't meant to use it, it will cut. Try them. to use Whereas it. Whereas like okay. this is like you actually you know use it, and that's where you're like your sneak attack's gonna do way more than two d twelve. Go put oh, it in the dragon's claw. Just go up to him and be like, "Hey, we hold this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that actually, is, that is very true. Okay, uh, sneak attack. I just Listen, always have to be reminded. I will stop putting cool flavor things. <laughs> in my yeah, yeah, gonna yeah. Try and do Mark, that. I love it. I love it so much. I just wanted to know if I. Could swindle I you out of an extra D twelve extra damage. I want my free two D twelve. <laughs> Just wanted to know. All right, it's oh, it's sixty six. Holy Hannah! Hold yeah, on, you're high level now, bruh. I didn't know bruh. that I got stronger. Five, yeah. eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty two. 
23. So 23 extra on top of the original damage, which was 10, or yes, 66, 10. So 33. And it's a magical weapon? Yeah. 33 points of damage. Tarkal plunges Epilogue into this creature's side. The black obsidian blade just slides through the dragon scales, and as it cuts, it almost begins to disintegrate the creature away. Not leaving just a wound, but actually erasing like parts of its body, almost like just deleting them as it cuts Whoa, through. That's uh, cool. And you, the dragon just lets out this <laughs> bellowing roar as it does. Uh, I will say, you have now got the creature to half its hit points. Um, that does mean it immediately recharges its acid breath. Uh, and now, I mean... from its various wounds, no. um, you begin to see like a thick, Icarus substance. Um, but that's it. Uh, um, was that enough damage uh, to break Bane? Let's find out. So 33 <laughs> uh, points of damage. Uh, 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 yeah, 16. 33 would be 16. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Natural 20 for a 30. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Ooh, my. Sorry, mate. <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna use kiss of silver in my offhand to try to do a Bonus little bit action. more baby damage. Yeah, you can't get you can't get sneak attack on this, but you can just oh do God. normal normal. Attack. Does this count as a bonus action or is this just my second attack? This is bonus action. Rogues don't get a second attack, I believe. I thought I took that trait, and we had that long talk of talking. <laughs> Is that, is that a D&D &D item, the talk of talking? Remember that long talk of talking we had, Mark, about that <laughs> Don't remember feat that. that I took? Hold I've on. given you a cool sword that deletes people when you hit them, so no. <laughs> you don't okay. get to so, another attack with no. it. Bonus okay. action. Then I'm not, not going to do it then. I've been had. I've been swindled. I'm going to instead bonus action disengage and just... All right. Just, I don't want to make a row of me and my friends. I want to be the just. I want to like be away from them. So you so could go to the other side of the stone mound, so that you are miles away from your friends. That would put you yeah. at uh, about forty. That'll put you seventy feet away from Agnes and Azara. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just go disengage. Okay. All right, cool. End of That's ten. It. That's the end of my turn. All right, uh, the dragon bellows up, uh, and it says. Rah! Clavicus, get here now. Uh, uh, um, who? You see it like, eh, Clavicus, some sort of name. No. Uh, you know that is. No, never mind. Have a kiss. No need. JK, uh, flag on the play. Drag on. <laughs> uh, is going to let out a bellowing roar. I need all of you to make wisdom saving throws. Start their turn. They let out a bellowing roar. I have a plus 10 to wisdom saving throws, so eat this, my 27. This is a frightened effect, so if any of you have like immunity to being frightened, then uh, you don't need to worry about this. But I think none of you, none of you got that. No. This was wisdom? Wisdom saving throw, please. Okay, I rolled an 18. 18 for Tarkal, 20 rolled... ridiculous for Agnes. <laughs> I rolled Azara. a 17. 17 for Azara. Poor Clive. <laughs> Oh, did you minus D4 from that, Shady, as well? It is the same. Oh, thing. I did not. I did not minus a D4 from that. All right. Sorry. Uh, Five, do you want to just tell us, or shall I just assume you failed? <laughs> One. Okay. Oh, mine, tur no. mine turned into a 14. Turned into a 14. Oh, wait. Do um, I do the minus D4 yeah, for Please funsies? do. Yes. Okay. Let's see how low sure. can you go. All right. He's frightened forever. Yeah. All right. So my save is a negative two. Negative two. Clive. All right. Tarkle. <laughs> And uh, Azara, you got 17. I did. You just passed then. So Tarkal and Clive are both frightened by this creature's draconic presence. <laughs> the, uh, the creature cannot... that I'm currently on? You're currently on. You <laughs> They're like, oh my move... god. You cannot move closer <laughs> to it, and you have disadvantage on attack okay, rolls as long as you are within all, you know, visual range. As long as what you can see is there. I think uh, Clive the... has his first ever panic attack. Oh no! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, oh, he's under me. I'm on him. I'm on him. I'm on him. Oh no. Uh, and on the dragon's turn, with its its bubbling acidic spit in its mouth, it's going to look at Agnes and Azara, the only two still grouped up, and the draconic spirit, actually, which would be in the cone's line. He is it there. is going to uh, breathe acid on Azara, Agnes, and the draconic spirit. Uh, Absorb elements! Two claw attacks against Clive because it has advantage against him. So, uh, dexterity saving throw. Uh, uh I got Azara got a 19. Okay. And the spirit got a 14. All I right. got a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, so half damage for uh, Agnes. 
no damage for Zara, full damage for the Draconic Spirit. Half Yikes. and half, right? Because I absorbed elements as well. Uh, you lost the resistance, and that was to the... No, the I just cast it. it again. Oh, did you just do it again? You yeah. wanted to cast it again? Sorry, I reaction. didn't hear you on that one, Anna. Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yes, if you cast, um, if you cast resistance, uh, absorb elements, sorry, then you're half and then half again. Quarter damage. Um, quarter damage. Uh, my apologies, I didn't hear you on that one. No, I, I didn't uh, make it very clear. I just yelled, absorb elements. Absorb elements! <laughs> 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 it's like in Magic the Gathering, and you're like, Hamster! Um, yeah. uh, so that would be... 40 points of damage to the Draconic Spirit. Oh, he has two whole hit points. Woo. Uh, that would be 20, then 10 acid points, uh, points of acid damage to Agnes. Okay. And then zero points of damage to Azara, who's uh, Dance of the Dance of the Squirrel. She does wins. a backflip. <laughs> and while she does a backflip, she goes, Hit! Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's I love that she's weapon. getting prettier and more graceful and more crude yeah. at the same time. That's, it's, literally, it's like a perfect scale. It's like yeah. the prettier she gets, the more she's to be like, oh, fuck yourself. It's, yeah. it's perfect. <laughs> First attack against Clive. 20 to hit you, Clive. That does not. Does not hit. Dang. So again, you kind of managed to reflect it off, uh, you know, your, your shield or your armor, whatever it happens to be. The next one is a 23. That does. That does. So this is going to be. Don't don't crash on me now, please. I Never need been you. easier. I need you. That's right. I just played it. Uh, that is going to be fourteen points of slashing damage. So you half that to seven because you are raging. Um, seven points of slashing damage as it breath breathes, uses its core attacks, it uses its chronic presence. Uh, oh, he's going to take one d six. Uh, he is. Brief damage. He also. Can the Draconic Spirit please make a Wisdom saving throw for me, please? As it's I mean, its reaction. it sure can. <laughs> it Hold sure on. Can. Let me see where his wisdom is. Is is this man smart? Oh, he has a plus two to his wisdom. All right. Three. Good for him. I got it. That's that's a a hearty six. This man is stupid. Hearty six. Uh, your spirit <laughs> is destroyed uh, as the psychic damage of its Love vicious that. of its malicious mockery uh, will ah. destroy the spirit, basically. Well. Um, <sighs> He tried, you know? Yeah, absolutely. One last thing to worry about. Get uh, a Bane check, please, for that, uh, <laughs> that flump. That flump. Wait, wait, wait. Quick Bane check. The flump did three damage, yeah? Right, can we get a no, yeah, no, you're right. The the force damage, yeah, did three points I'm on top of this Bane, man. I hate it so much. Shady. Shady. <gasps> Roll the one. Yes! Yay! Oh. However. What do you no. mean? Even you however. Too. I miscalculated, and I th <laughs> it's plus 10 to its con, which means it gets an 11, which is higher than DC 10. Wait, no, so Mark it can never be done? It I, can, if you, but you have to do more than, than 20 damage. You have to do 22 have points to, of damage. Yeah. We have to be better, is what he's saying. <laughs> okay, be next turn, wombo combo. I got the this. Wombo, this combo is going to do it. I, like, this is going to do some serious damage to this thing um as yeah you can see it's like desperately kind of swinging around um oh actually that's a point i don't know it wouldn't have been yeah it wouldn't have been another weapon attack. okay uh clive of the wild main you're up and then we have azara then agnes okay so i'm on him you are on him i am afraid disadvantage because you are afraid you can repeat the same throw at the end of your turn though so i guess uh if i could can I, can I still, like, try to attack it? Yeah, you can. You just have disadvantage. Yeah, you can still try to attack it. You just can't <laughs> move like, closer, <laughs> which you can't physically do. Stabbing uh, one. Like, no. <laughs> attack it with disadvantage. Uh, well, and then, yeah, so good. it... But I, I would know it's disadvantage on yeah. spell saves, right? Uh, on... Yes. Uh, you, well, you have advantage. Spell attacks against it have advantage. Uh, and it has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Oh, dex saves. Okay, well, either way, I'm going to... I guess I'm going to try to sunbeam it from where I am. With your shield, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, like, hold the shield up to it and try uh, and blast them. Yeah, what's the save on sunbeam? Is it? I think it's con? Con 15. Con 15. So, that would normally be a 13... I'm going to use one of his legendary resistances no. to automatically succeed. It didn't, no, I am. I, no. I'm afraid I am. <laughs> and I did. Well, I it's half actually. damage. So. It is half damage and not blinded. So the radiant beam of the shield, and you can repeat it every every turn, the sunbeam as well. You mm -hmm. can fall, you can continuously pump out the, the sunbeam. So it's 19 halved. 
Uh, so that would be ba -ba 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 nine, I think. Yeah. And then I guess I'll try to roll off him and run away. Uh, yes, you can do that. You'll get an attack of opportunity, though. You don't know, have to I'm... run away. You just can't move toward him, which you I literally do can't anyway. get closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't this have is not to run ideal away, for my fear. Uh, would you like? Would you like an, uh, to get away? Uh, if I would know that it's going to be an attack of opportunity, so I think yeah, of course you do. maybe I'm just like trying to stay behind his line of sight. Like anytime he moves his head, I like move the other way. Just yeah, like, it, it, it's if like he's like so me. serpentine. It's like he'll twist his neck one way. You'll roll to the other side, and then it whips its neck around the other way, and it's just right there again. And you're just like, ah, 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 ah. you're kind of doing that thing, <laughs> like spinning to the sides. Um, alrighty, at the end of your turn, Clive. Uh, I need to do a thing, right? Uh, you need to make a wisdom saving throw against the Draconic Fear. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. So that is a 19, minus 1, 18. Bane's over, right? No. Oh, right. Didn't do it. Okay. That was that whole so, thing of I forgot oh, that right, saving right. throws aren't automatic failures on a 1. It's only cool. attack rolls. Minus 4, so. <laughs> yep, you're still frightened, I'm afraid. So that Bane's cool. really doing its work. Neato. Um, neat o uh and yeah that's and then that's the end of your turn uh at the end of your turn mm -hmm. use, legendary, use legendary action i'm afraid baby uh and hmm, what do i want to do as a legendary action here as a legendary action it's gonna be interesting clive i'm gonna give you a choice you can try and stay on the dragon or you can come off the dragon do I, do I have any insight as to why yeah. we, why the hell why you're you asking? That choice? <laughs> so the dragon is going to use its legendary action, Draconic Shadows, to fly half its speed up. And it's going to go up through the hole that it created when the ceiling collapsed. And it's going to fly up into the air, into the night sky, uh, above the ruins where the battle is taking place. Okay, so seeing as how even without fear, Clive is not a very logical person, we're going to okay. roll. Sure. Uh, uh, this will not provoke opportunity attacks as well. Just so one, folks know. Uh, one through one, one through three. I try to get off. It is a two, so I'm going to try and get off. Okay, it's, you, you don't even need to try to. Like you can just elect to. The creature hmm. doesn't try and keep you with it. Uh, so you just roll to the side and you land on top of this pile of stone rubble, as it's going to fly uh, about sort of ten, twenty feet up. And then it flies away so it actually goes out of vision range as it flies out um as it's just you can hear it just bellowing like claudicus come here you wretch as it flies up into the night sky um and the ruins are that were the battles taking the place around um yeah that's, that's what it's gonna do leaving you guys there uh and that is its movement that is it. sorry it's legendary action we jump to azara mithras yeah Interesting. You have advantage on spells and it has disadvantage against dexterity, don't forget. That is true. Now, how far away did this 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 sir leave? You saw it go twenty feet up and then it vanished. You, I I'll tell you that it went twenty feet somewhere, but yeah. All right. Oh we can't well, see it anymore? It so it flew up through the hole in the sort of like collapsed ceiling and then that hole leads down to the ruins and then it flew to the side. So basically. Well if it flew twenty feet upwards then I'm going to also fly 20 feet upwards. Yeah, so you'll need to sort of come 30 feet in because you were at the edge of the room. So okay. Can, but then you can kind of diagonal it. So okay. you, you're about 10 feet above the hole, basically. Okay. So you, you get through the hole. Okay. Um, and, and what you see is Zara, when you finish that movement, you use all your movement to get up and about. You're hovering sort of in the air 10 feet I use feet all above 40 feet? Oh, 40 feet, sorry. Uh, in that case then, yeah. So you get uh, 10 feet above the hole. So uh -huh. you kind of go at like an angle uh -huh. and then you'll have 10 feet of movement to decide where you want to go. But I'll describe the scene for you. Uh, you see surrounding you is this old ruined watchtower, maybe a small barracks. It's all kind of broken and crumbling into ruins. Uh -huh. um, you can see that around you, not too far, maybe sort of like 50, 60 feet away, uh, the mountains begin to kind of like sculpt upwards. Uh, you can see dense forests and trees all around this like little mountainside watchtower. Um, and you see that the battle that had been taking place with Alyssa's ground forces and the Thorn cultists has actually moved away from this ruined top 
um and they are now basically it looks like your forces are pursuing them in retreat like they're they're fleeing and your forces are pursuing after them down the mountainside so mm -hmm. you actually emerge and you can hear the sounds of battle leaving away from you as the tressen knights swoop down trying to snatch up these tr uh, 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 snatch up these cultists and these these soldiers um as Alyssa is chasing them with her ground forces uh looking around you don't see the dragon I don't see the dragon. Uh, not, not uh, without making like a more direct perception check or something like that. You, you don't see it. The, it is a thick night. It is a moonless night. It is very dark. Um, I knew Mark are... wouldn't let me get my wombo combo. I, I, it's not not letting you. It's playing the dragon as best I can. But you can still good. You can still pull it off. It's just going to require some teamwork. We'll see. Um, um, if I do a check, that's my whole turn, isn't it? I would say it would be your bonus action to make a quick look, uh, which will be a higher, it will give uh, a bonus to a stealth check. It will be a full action to make a more detailed look, um, which will be uh, its normal base stealth check that it made earlier. Um, it's a full action. Oh, if I quicken my spell, I can cast a full spell as a bonus action, right? You can. So I'm going to yes. quicken my spell. Okay. Um, and then I will take an action to try and to spot it, basically. Spot it. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll tell you now, this thing, you know, you saw it earlier. It seemed to blend in with the shadows. When it flew up, now that the ruins have kind of been abandoned, mm -hmm. it's hiding. It, it, it's, it's, it's hiding in the shadows and the night and the gloom here, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so do I do a, uh, what do uh, I do? Uh, it'll be a perception check. Also, sorry, I forgot that it has a no on these technically as well. Um, all right, yeah, so just an advantage check, please. Uh, perception check, advantage check, perception check. That's going to be nice. Look at that face. It's like you're the, you, you have the worst natural 20 poker face uh, <laughs> that you can possibly imagine. Uh, it's also okay. plus seven, so it's a 27. 27. <laughs> so you see just out the corner of your eye, taking a real long, slow look, feeling the magic building in you with your quicken spell. You just see the flicker of something um, reflecting. Uh, a piece of moonlight caught on a, a dropped shield is bouncing off a portion of shadow in a weird way. Uh -huh. And you see just the outline of a scale. And, and it, to you, it would have just looked like a thick, dark shadow of the watchtower. But right. you can see the dragon is coiled around it, trying to stay hidden, and you just managed to catch it. Interesting. We love oh, that. The guiding light actually also lights it up. Like, it wouldn't be Does able to hide now? that easy. I just oh. realized. Oh. Uh, it says. It outlines the target in a silvery light that pulls yeah. magic towards it, and the target is disadvantaged in any dexterity saving throws. I should have okay, thought of that before I, you did all the rolling. Yeah, it doesn't specifically say, like, it says it casts some light, but it doesn't say it has, like, disadvantage on stealth or something. So I'd say that that's maybe what gives the clue away. So it's actually the, the it's Galathea's light that draws your attention. There's, like, a strange pooling of starlight coming from something that it shouldn't, and that's what clues you in. Dope. Narratively, it gives the light, but there's no mechanical, like, disadvantage mm. on stealth. Um, so now that I've seen it, mm -hmm. uh, as a free action, is going to chuckle and be like... <laughs> pathetic and i'm going to cast witch bolt at the seventh level but i'm also going to channel divinity yep um so, so i can boom. so i can big boom destructive mm -hmm. wrath which means that is what is uh well let me let me let me roll the hit first yes i believe it is and i have an advantage because this is a spell for us right it does so. uh i will say it does have a slightly higher ac whilst it is hiding in gloom okay Okay, the first one is 18 plus 11, which is 29. 29 is still going to hit. <laughs> and then, yes. just in case, 13 plus 11. So, 29 hits, right? Yes, uh, 29 hits. What is 7 times 12? Uh, 84. Dang, yep, he's fast. So, 84, 85, 86, 87 points of lightning damage. 87 points of damage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you see... Yeah. Oh man, this is. I just need to work this out. Hang on. So, hang on. I just, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's epic. So, eight, uh, sorry, 87 points of damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that excessive? Hang 
It was, te- it was Am 12 I times the 7, drama? right? Am I the drama? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I take it back. I take it back. Sorry. Can I take it back? What do you mean? Can I just take back the spell level that I use? Why? I just, I, I want to use it at the fifth level. I take it back because I was you saving want... my seventh level. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Fifth level. Is that okay? okay. Yeah, Can yeah, I do yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Okay. Shane, <laughs> yeah. What... I'll take less damage. <laughs> Shane, what's, what's five times 12? 60. Yeah. 63. 63 like points of damage. Yeah, yeah, okay, 63 yeah. points of damage. Sorry, I'm saving my seventh level. I realize that. Yeah, you gotta save it just in case we encounter like a dragon or something. Well, he's calling some other <laughs> motherfucker. Sure, he is calling. I don't someone. know. <laughs> could be his twin brother. Could be another Willow Song sibling. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. So, yeah. as Azara, you're like hovering, sort of like yeah. ten feet over this hole. Yeah. You catch the dragon. Yeah. You summon this just bolt of lightning that erupts from your hand. Yeah. And another creature that was hidden that was making its way towards the hole um because you were looking for the dragon you didn't spot this creature it was yeah. you know, a bit longer yeah. you see clad in the robes of a war mage a, a, a cormerian war mage you see this figure like speak uh, oh, a word in draconic and a shield print, like erupts in front of the dragon and absorbs <laughs> some of the damage not all of the damage uh, the shield, the power of the lightning bolt is so strong, it bra- it shatters this mage's ward and still strikes the dragon, but it absorbs a good chunk of it. Nearly half the damage is absorbed by the shield as this robed figure, uh, like, nervously looking around, like, very greasy, thin, thin black hair. Um, they look to be, I would probably say they're probably a tiefling. Um, male tiefling with, like, really stringy, thin black hair, clutching, like, a black uh, staff with a black dragon's head. Um, is, is like, look, he's like, Master, uh, I've tried to deflect as much of it as I could. Um, as the spell is absorbed, as it, uh, as uh, Cloudicus will use their reaction to use their arcane ward. Uh, uh, these nuts, Shady's dude. face was so delightful. Just pure. Got like, him. Oh! <laughs> like, I hate this. I hate you. That was awful. Yes. I am going uh, to use my last 10 feet of movement. To fly, to fly back. No, back to my friends. Back down back, the hole. Back down. You go ten back, feet down. Back down. And as mm-hmm. I go back down, he is. Is it robes that Rosara would recognize? Um. Yeah. Th- this isn't like a senior war mage. This is probably, you know, like a, a fairly standard war mage. Like somebody who is probably, you know, before you became the sort of, um, before mm-hmm. you sort of joined Evening Star, and you know, probably would have been a bit more advanced than you. Um, but not like a not this isn't anybody like important uh, right but he would have been like a cormirian like he should have been fighting on our side yeah, but absolutely clearly... absolutely yeah should've... right yeah, okay absolutely. so same as way is... that like all of cormir should be fighting on your side but it looks like shadow briar and some of these other fuckers have done some you know uh, yeah. stuff. as azara is uh as, is descending back down into the hole uh, she's just shouting obscenities in Draconic, like, I'll take your license, you'll never work in Cormier <laughs> again, like, I'll have, I'll enjoy breaking your staff over my knee, how dare, like, just, just. Just rage, just mad. It, all super in Draconic, mad. yeah, super yeah. mad, she's super mad. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I bet Draconic cussing sounds really intense. <laughs> right, just very, yeah. it's like yeah. German turned up to 11. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just at the end of Azara's turn. What a uh, what a what a one thing. I want oh, my turn. Shit. I want my turn. I'm still I want your turn. ten feet down, so you lose sight of the because you go back down the hole, Azara. You lose sight of what's happening up above. Uh, so a thing happens. Ah, Agnes. Okay. So I need to get up there, and I can fly, but I'd have to expend too many charges with my mantle, and then I wouldn't be able to do immolation, which I really want to do. So here's okay. what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be like Clive boost okay and clive is standing at the top of the the mound he, he he landed on the top of the mound absolutely and it's maybe about 10 feet 15 feet to go from the top of the mound to the edges where you could then stand oh well i thought it was 20 feet yeah i mean it yeah it, it's close to it's like 10 this is it's still like 15, 20 feet okay so never mind i don't need clive forget clive uh, Kander is well, with Clive. Don't forget, you've you've got to go 30 feet up onto the top of the mound because you're at the side of the chamber. So you'd have to go 30 feet to get to the top of the mound, and then it would be another 10 to fi- like 15 ish feet to go from the top of the mound to the uh, side lip. Yeah. So oh, I, you've got Kander. Kander, and I go. Yeah. Doo, doo, doo. I run all the way up the mound, and then I jump from the top of the mound, and at, mm-hmm. in mid jump, Kander goes, Poof, and I disappear in fire. And then I appear 
on the ground at the side of the hole. That's right, because Kanda would have been with Clive at the top as well, yeah. right? So you can then have Kanda... Kanda can't move until the end of your turn. Because Kanda takes their turn after yours, remember? Yeah. But That's you could really ask cool Clive for the boost. Though. You could try the boost idea. Like, that would still that would still function. Yeah, Clive's tall. I'm going to climb Clive and jump off Clive. Yeah, yeah. And ask so him to boost Clive me. just basically is going to try and throw you uh, yeah. to give you the jump. Yeah. What is... So, okay. Clive, what's your strength score? Uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, 23. 23. Clive can easily throw you. Sweet. Uh, like, he actually clears you by about eight feet. Uh, cool. If you want to, uh, you can land on it. I imagine yeah. this looks really cool. Just like a fiery, like, yeah, you're just like angel of fire shoots up out. Like, yeah. Around your shoulders, like you launch through the air as Clive literally, probably with the shield, kind of Captain America, you know, springboards cool. you as you land through the air. Uh, yeah, just annoyingly, Candle has to go at the end of your turn. So you have to okay. kind of, like set Candle. That would have been cool. but it, Both were cool. Both yeah. options are cool. cool. True, true, true. Okay. But in midair, once I get up there, my percep my passive perception is twenty four. You so, yeah, you see the dragon. You don't need to make a check. Your passive yeah. is enough for you to see. Unfortunately, so, Zara's was not. Zara's in midair, just seventeen. Immolation cast at the dragon. Yeah, and what it, do I need to I do? have advantage, and it has disadvantage. So it's a dexterity saving throw uh, against immolation. Disadvantage. Yes, and I don't have to cast, I don't have to roll anything. It has to right. beat my spell DC, First which... one, 19 plus 8 is 27. First one, disadvantage. Come on, come on. That was natural. <laughs> ah! oh! But, but, what I would say is even if it had failed, I still had two legendary resistances for its use. <sighs> well, so does it have an effect on uh, a successful does it have like a on a on a failed on a successful save it takes half damage oh yeah actually the target must make a deck saving throw it takes 8d6 fire damage on a failed save oh shit yeah what about or half as save? much damage on a successful one there you go so 8d6 uh and then give it the uh give so the it's half 4d6 oh yeah you can roll 46 you can roll 8d6 and then half it 8d6 and a half is generally what you're supposed to do okay i'll do that and there's mm -hmm. also further effects after that. So, mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. D six rolled is twenty nine. So half of that will be. Do you round up 15. or down? Fifteen. Uh, you generally it's generally rolled down, so it'd be fourteen, I think. Okay. And 14 then fourteen points of fire damage. Uh, the dragon, by the way, as you're hitting it with these spells, and this was when Azara's lightning bolt hit it as well. Any creatures that would have been within like five feet of it, like as these spells are hitting it, its wounds are like spurting acidic blood. But there's no creatures within five feet for it to do that to. Oh, so. also I have, because of improved bond, uh, mm. it also takes another, it's a D8, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a fire I'm spell. I'm gonna double check, en enhanced bond. Yeah, D8. So it takes a, a little extra, just a little pew pew. Just Seven more fire damage. Extra. Seven more fire damage. Yeah, and then it's looking rough. This dragon is is burnt. It's got this huge hole in its chest from the witch bolt. Like it is, it is badly wounded. Um, and then it also burns for the spell's duration, which is a minute. So it sheds bright light in a thirty foot radius, dim light for an additional thirty feet, and at the end of each of its turn, it repeats the saving throw and takes forty six fire damage on a failed save. Uh, I think that effect is only when it on a failed save the target yeah that it, on a successful oh, save those boo. effects don't apply boo unfortunately oh well it's still um, cool yeah unfortunately so on a failed save but yeah you still launch the fire damage it engulfs the creature and now you are within range of seeing it and like you can see this mage is desperately like looking around like between the two of you uh as uh, this mage is now also uh, part of the encounter um, and how far am i from the dragon now uh, so the dragon was only about 20 feet away from the hole. So it kind of got up to the top of the hole and it flew 20 feet away. So if you lured, you're, you're probably about 10, 10 feet away. You're about technically, you're like 12 feet away from the dragon itself. And how, and the, so I'm on like, here's the hole. Yep. Dragon's over here. I'm on this side. The, the mage edge. is on the other yep. side. Uh, so the I'm mage, between no, them. No, the mage is on the same side, but to the side, basically, but about 30 feet away. Okay. All on the same side, but keeping its distance from the dragon, mainly using its magic to cover it. 
I'm uh, too squishy to be the only one that remains in visual range of the dragon. So I'm going to be like, bye. And Candor's going to poof me back okay. down onto the top. <laughs> That's great. Cause I was gonna, I was, something was going to happen if you'd stayed up there. But yeah, you, you bamf back down. Um, yeah. And yeah, you, you lose sight of the dragon and the mage, but you are now in the safe sort of like, at least you have some sort of cover, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, end of turn? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Candor. Good job. Uh, the mage does something. I'm not gonna tell you what. Um, and then we'll do that. Uh, Tarkle. Uh, how far am I away from the mound plus Clive? You moved, uh, you moved to the other side. So you're at the base of the mound. So it's basically the mound's about sort of like, you know, oh, okay. feet up, or like 10 feet up. Okay. Um, and then how, I guess I don't know how far away the dragon is from the top of the hole. Uh, I mean, you can, yeah, I'd say like, as long as Agnes and Azara know, cause they both know, they can just be like, yeah, it's yeah, about how 10 far, feet how that far, way. How far is the lad? It's over there. Yeah, it's, okay. about tw it's about 20 feet away from the edge of the hole. So once you, what, from the, the edge of the area, basically. I like that we're like whack-a-mole magicking. We're yeah. <laughs> like you're basically, <laughs> Clive is like throwing you up, you cast the spell midair and then you land. Yeah. Basically, I mean, or I'm you jump back do, down. I'm not gonna do any damage though. So I don't know what I'm best served as. Um. Get the mage. Position. Get ready. Where did you see? Where did you see the mage? Uh, I, I point. There's a there's a, a guy. It's about mage thirty guy. feet to the side of the hole, basically. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna just do it. Don't cost him the win. I'm gonna go and jump up. Uh, Clive. Okay. Clive, can you throw me as far as you can possibly throw me towards the mage? Yeah. Okay. What's <laughs> Clive's What's Clive's con modifier? Uh, plus six. Plus six. All right. Don't worry about it. Yep. Clive easily throws another one of you up the hole. Okay. And then I can see this mage. How far, how much further is he from me now? 20 feet. Because Clive threw you 10 feet away from And me. I had to use how much movement? 15 feet? 10. To get okay. So I have enough to, I'm going to run up. I'm going to straight, wait, does this mage know I'm here? Can I be sneaky? Is he focusing on healing the dragon? He sounds so panicked. His master's like, oh no, lightning bolts. Mm. Ah. So uh you would so here's the way it would work you would land you could then use your bonus action to try and hide and then you could use uh half your movement to try and get closer would that be that would that be enough to get you 20 feet because stealthing is at half movement you go half speed when you're stealth well uh so it'd be 10 feet clive throws you you'd have 20 feet left so you would only be able to get 10 feet close to the mage you wouldn't be able to get close to him this turn if you try and stealth let me think. Okay. I will, I will instead, I will instead, I will try to bonus action hide when I land All up right. top. Okay. okay. Like, go for it. Roll a stealth check for me. Uh, that's a 16 plus 14. 30. Yeah, uh, as far as you know, you are hidden from the mage. Um, yep. Okay. Then I would like to, from where I am, now I'm, I'm 20 feet from the mage. Uh, yes, when you landed, you were 20 feet away. And I have 20 feet of movement left, but if I want to move, then I can only you can move only go 10, 10 feet. Yes. Okay, That's so cool. then I will not move. I will just uh, put epilogue, like, I'll look at it, but I'm just going to... And take Kiss of Silver in my main hand and try to... Throw. Yeah. Yep. So I have that advantage. Works. I have you advantage. Do. You are hidden. That's uh, 13 plus 9, 22. And then a 4. So 22 to hit. 22 to hit will hit the mage. Yeah, for sure. The dagger sneak slides past. And I get um, sneaky attack. Yeah. You do? You were you had advantage on the attack roll? Okay. So then I will roll a d4 plus four. So that's a three plus four. So seven. And then six of these. Okay. Eight. Nine. Uh hold on. Thirteen. But I have an ability that when I have an advantage, I can re-roll one of the dice. Yes. So I'm going to reroll one of those ones, and that's going to be a five. So instead, that's plus four. So 17, uh, 20, 25, 31. Okay, 31 damage to the mage. 31 points of damage. So you reveal yourself, but having snuck uh, within 10 feet closer, maybe using like a low, broken, crumbled wall, uh, mm -hmm. you kind of flip up 
Kiss of Silver whips out of your hand. It strikes the mage. You can see that the mage is protected by some sort of magic armor. Uh, it's going to represent their hit points. like, And it breaks and it shatters. Uh, and they spin, looking panicked towards you. Not enough to kill them or take them down, but definitely injures their, their arcane defenses and wounds them, uh, leaving them stunned like, Oh, master! I hate this guy. <laughs> um, and I use my bonus action, but I still have movement left. Can I whack them all back into the hole? <laughs> Can I sl like? <laughs> you used all of your movement to get to because you you ten feet. Got I thought thrown. no, but I, then I didn't move. Remember, I I, I you said oh, I had twenty you did feet want of movement. To move. You wanted to just hide and, and I just, then and, and then I just kiss a silver yeah. throw. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In that case. Yeah. In that case. Yeah. You could try and drop down the hole. Yeah. Sure. I'm gonna just drop down the hole. Okay. <laughs> so you currently have. So we are the most clear, annoying people. I want to be clear here. <laughs> Agnes, Tarkle. Azara and Clive are all at the top oh, of yeah. the stone mound, all yeah. together in a little group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as long right. as I have to stick to what I said after you said that, then yeah, I guess I'm gonna yeah, do well, that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, yeah. That's, does that's it take the all twenty? Benefit. Does it take? Does it take twenty of my feet to get to the hole? Like to get into the, the on the top yeah, of the mound? Yeah, technically you just fell. Then you could you, run. You just said you jumped back down onto the mound. You're all on the mound. Maybe not all right. How next much to each movement other. does that take from me, though, Mark? How much does it? How much move my twenty does it well, take? What else would you have done? What else would you have done on your turn before I said anything? Yeah, you're right. I probably I probably wouldn't have done anything. So you're good man the dice are unkind but also kind in other ways um a heavily injured uh black dragon you don't actually know this black dragon's name yet pulls itself up and you can see acid blood dripping from its wounds its face now burnt by these flaming scars dealt by uh, agnes's immolation this gaping chest in it near where its heart would have been just dripping acidic blood oozing onto the floor it pulls itself to the edge of this hole and it's gonna look in and with its recharged acid breath. I mean, it doesn't have to. <laughs> just basically, it just vomits acid in like a <laughs> column down onto you guys. guys We're like, hee hee, hee hee, hee hee. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. We're like, oh, it's the consequences of Dex our acid. Saving throws all around, please. Mind I am casting another. absorb elements as a reaction. Thank you. I just wasted my 20, bro. This is sad. <laughs> I could have had that on the mage and he would have been dead. Uh, I rolled so, a crit. We have for Ag let's go around. Agnes, deck save. 18. 18. Shady. Yeah. Oh. It's like uh, infinite. 20, 20 million and you've got invasion. Yeah. So you're yeah. you're done. I'm you not yet. Yeah, I'm not. You're done. Mika. That's sick. 21, bro. 21. No, nothing. Uh, Clive. Do I see it? You do see it. Okay. You are still bained. Okay. This is very crucial I do this math. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love it. The damage I did to it wasn't enough to stop Bane, huh? I just I just checked it, so I just mm. did it's con save. And no. And same Little... with my lightning. I did that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did that one. Little higher this time. Two. <laughs> with oh my advantage goodness. my roll was a six so Crazy. if i understand so agnes what was your total on your saving throw did you say sorry 18 18 against the Asperth is enough so it's gonna be quarter damage for you no damage for the two evasions and then poor old clive is taking the full whack so clive you are taking 37 acid Oof. damage uh that'd go 15 17 eight points of acid damage to agnes um i don't believe its claws have enough reach uh so the dragon will use the rest of its movement to move back away from the hole it sort of like crawls up there yeah. copy our, <laughs> copy our homework was, <laughs> yeah was and uh, then, was that an attack roll uh no it was not I mean, oh it was right a it was a save yeah. cool 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 well then i unstable backlash whatever i gotta sure. do something yep Absolutely, man. <laughs> All right. All right. Big money this time. Okay. So I am replacing the previous effect with the same effect. Okay. Nice. nice. Great. So nice. I found a really long winded way to do nothing. <clears throat> Perfect. All right. Clive of the Wild Mane, followed by Azara, followed by Agnes. What? It is your turn. What would you like to do? 
Uh, so he's in this hole? Uh, he has moved away. He crawled up to the hole, vomited acid, and then he slid away up above you somewhere. You don't know where. Oh, above. Yeah. It was like flown out up into the, uh, the area. You're also our springboard, so wherever you move will affect whether we can jump out of the hole too. Uh, how many charges does the... Oh, wait, can I still do the sunbeam? Uh, yeah, you technically still can. Yeah, you can't see the dragon currently from where you are, but as long as you... Um, I think you have to maintain concentration, though, so you have to make a concentration check against mm. DC 17, so it's a constitution saving throw. Okay, con save. That's plus 11. I want to die. No. Oh. 13. Minus the d4. <laughs> oh! You're toxic, oh, dude. Good. You're toxic, <laughs> dude. Wait, what, wait, what was the DC? Uh, uh, it's 17. Can I now use my inspiration? <laughs> you know what, Nate? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll let All you. Right. I'll let you re-roll it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you... What the hell? <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I, Clive's going to sit down. So, <laughs> Clive, coated in acid, you just kind of forget how the sunbeam works and you just sit down on the mm. pile of like melted rocks, which have all become like this viscous, rocky goo around you, and you just sit in it and you're just. Yep. Gone. Can you kneel instead of sit so you can still throw us? I think I could throw while sitting. Okay. I, 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 tw strength of 23 and a con of <laughs> Just plus toss six. with one yeah. arm, just like, yeah. just really upset. Uh, what I was going to do, by the way, the reason I asked for the com mod is you can throw a number of these guys uh, a number of times equal to your com mod, and then you're going to start making saves for against exhaustion because you're going to start getting tired from bouncing these guys up. But you've got will, another four throws before you have to worry about that. Will, uh, it, will it save me on exhaustion if I don't do anything else because nothing else is working? <laughs> I, I am so sorry, man. Like, I, I'm crazy. Just, the, the dice are just absolutely screwing you tonight. Um, we have Azara. Uh, the dragon uh, is going to do something upstairs. Well, you don't know what, but it's doing something. Of course it is. Um, how close to the dragon? I will say uh, when it when it pulled itself up to spew acid on you, the light of Galathir's, uh the starlight arrow had vanished. Uh, it has been dispelled. You imagine? Um, how close? are the dragon and the little uh, traitors twerp to each other? Uh, you don't know currently. You're currently downstairs. You'd have to fly up and try and see if you can see them and, and everything else. Gotcha, so. okay. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of movement to fly up because I'm, okay. I'm on the rubble, right? So it's only You're on the rubble, feet. yep, yep. You can just okay. fly 10 feet up and then you can get at least a look around. You're at sort of ground level when you go up 10 feet. What do I see? Um, yep, you look around, you see the mage cowering, sniveling behind a rock. That uh -huh. dragon is hiding again. Trying God! To hide. Yeah, heckin it is sneaky. Heck it. Sneaky boy. Sneaky little, you know what? Then this is on the dragon. What is about to happen is on the dragon. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's a little mm -hmm, shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I have been using, waiting to use my seventh level for, uh, <laughs> this is stupid. I'm gonna do it anyway. I would like to cast Storm Sphere. Oh. Uh, it's a 20 foot radius, which I assume is large. It says 150 uh, feet range, 20 foot radius. Yeah, so it means that you can place a 20 foot radius sphere within 150 feet like, right. around you. I a 20 foot like... radius sphere will hit an area about 40 feet wide. So okay. About, like, I want to put it kind of like where the mage is, mm -hmm. but like just so it's kind of like enveloping his head. So he will mm -hmm. get hit with this, but high enough that it's kind of covering where a dragon might be. Just kind okay. of like hedging my bets. Okay. Uh, so you're going to try and target around the mage, hoping that the, the dragon is, is close by, right? Yes. Like that's your kind of aim. Essentially. Okay. Um, um, all right. So the sure, mage sure, sure. has to take 5d6 bludgeoning damage if I hit him. Okay. Uh, uh, is this like a saving throw? No, uh, it's roll to hit. Oh. For Storm Sphere? Yeah, it says roll to hit. Uh, the sphere remains for the spell to Oh, strength saving throw for the D2, 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Yes, okay, so yeah. So this and then is I it. do so want to hit for the lightning damage. That's what yes. it is. Yes, I'm going to read it out so people know, because this is yeah. I've not really seen this spell before. So you create a sphere, 
Uh, the yeah. sphere remains for the spell's duration. Each creature in the sphere, when it appears on that turn, must succeed in a strength saving throw or take 2d6 bludgeoning damage, and then mm -hmm. it becomes difficult to rain the sphere. Mm -hmm. And then until the spell ends, you can use a bonus action on each of your turns to cause a bolt of lightning to leap mm -hmm. from the center of the sphere mm -hmm. towards one creature you choose within 60 feet of the center. Yep. Uh, you make a ranged spell attack, and then you get to and then you do damage on the hit. And then I have uh, advantage you have advantages of, on attack yeah. if it is in the sphere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, the mage will make their strength saving throw. I'm almost sure they're going to fail this. They do with a zero. Uh, hmm. One minus one is zero. So, so 2d6 bludgeoning. 2d6 of bludgeoning. Mm -hmm. uh, that's five plus four, so nine. Nine points of bludgeoning. Uh, so, I'm just trying to pitch this in my head. Do you know what? To make this fair, I'm going to roll a d6 because I think there's a 50-50% chance that the dragon would either go to the ruins near where the swarm sphere is, or it would have gone to the other side where there is cover with the barracks. So I'm just going to roll a d6. Uh, I'm going to roll this to everyone so you can all see. Uh, and <laughs> it rolled before I had a chance. So say one to three, it's in the sphere. Four to six, it's not in the sphere. I rolled a two, it is in the sphere. So as the sphere oh, cool. erupts out, uh, you do illuminate at uh, the base of this tower kind of wrapped up in in the upper edges of this ruined tower using the kind of shadows being cast uh to try and hide itself is the dragon strength save uh against the bludgeoning is an 11 so it's going to fail that it's going to take 2d6 that. bludgeoning that's three plus four so seven half yep. to three and yeah it, i would say that that is enough to break its stealth like you see the sphere kind of envelop the dragon and the dragon and the mage are both inside of it so Azara is going to look over to the dragon and like once it essentially reveals itself <sighs> and she's going to grin because she was like, well, this is going to be for your snivelly little friend, but, and then I'm going mm -hmm. to cast the lightning bolt at the dragon. Okay. Go for um, it. Which is an 11, but I have advantage. Uh, you do not anymore. Uh, if he's in the sphere. I oh, wait, he's in the sphere. Sorry, managed, I thought you meant right? from Agnes's. Uh, oh no, no, no. Uh, he's in the sphere. No, yeah. Oh, is he's that over? Sphere. It was. Yeah, it was. It, it was no longer affecting him when he crawled up to the, the edge of the pit. Mm. First roll Perhaps is a dirty twenty. Cast a spell magic. Perhaps he did. Perhaps he and did. the second uh, roll is a twenty-five. So the twenty actually won't hit as long as it's in shadow. It actually improves its AC uh, by a certain amount, but the twenty-five will hit. Wonderful. Uh, so that's so four d six of get. lightning damage. Yes. It's two, six. So that's eight plus five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So eighteen lightning damage. Eighteen points of lightning damage. The dragon, be, like heavily wounded, broken, uh, desperately injured. Uh, just roars in pain and rage as you strike it with this lightning bolt. And then I'm going to pop back down because it's <laughs> mad at me and I do not want to get hit. Um, since I only use 10 feet, that means I have 30 feet of movement. Yep, I would like speed. to go hover, not like under the lip. I'm assuming there's like a hole in, and then I'm just I'm going to be sure. like under yep. a lip. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. End of turn? End of turn. It's going to use legendary action. Nobody's upstairs. Agnes. Mm. <sighs> I'm going Actually, to... Actually, Agnes hears something. <laughs> I've just okay. realized something that would happen. Oh. You hear, because you're on top of the mound, uh, Zara probably wouldn't hear this, and I think only Agnes re has got the perception to hear this. You hear a very faint... Master, where are you going? <laughs> from from up above. And that's what, what you hear. <laughs> I yell, he's fleeing. Maybe. Um, maybe. maybe. It's... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try immolation again, I think. So I'm just doing the math because with the mantle of embered ashes, in order to get a charge back, because I've spent four, I get a total of seven. So I need one more if I'm going to try immolation again. Mm hmm. Um, so let me let me help you out there because this is a custom custom nonsense item that I made. I can uh, just cast a spell. So the way it works is to get a charge back. Uh, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. You can uh, use a bonus action to basically lose a spell slot, a first level or higher. Um, 
basically that yeah that you would have you, you know you would basically expend a spell that you you would call spider man yeah i realize now that like i've used old school D D where you actually had to physically choose which spells you had prepared i don't know why i did that because i know that that doesn't work but basically it's just expend That's a spell fine. slot of a certain level you get um and i only uh, need one charges and so it rounds level two. up to one yeah minimum yeah. of one. Oh, you could so, yeah you could do a level one if you just yeah one. yep so i just throw There's aside like, <laughs> throw aside a a first level spell slot that recharges it mantles like flare to life they've been as you've been spending the charges it's like the mantle's been shrinking and getting dimmer around you and then it kind of flares a bit more to life as you expend the spell and i'm like <clears throat> clive and i asked clive to throw me well, no. <laughs> and then <laughs> as soon as i'm in the air do i see the dragon so the dragon was attempting to hide i rolled very badly uh, it has flown. It is now about 60 feet and is like on the mount. It's like in the mountains, trying to like use the mountains to hide itself. Um, it is 60 feet away from the hole, but you do see it. And good thing that Immolation's range is 90 feet. So there again, you so you are just in range on this. Yeah. All right. Uh, it needs to deck save against me. Dex saving throw for the black dragon. Against 19. It doesn't have disadvantage this time. Unfortunately. 15 plus 8, 23. Boo. Well, it still takes Half the damage. fail. Yeah. Half damage. And it is low. I'll tell you that it is really injured. That's really, D6s. Really yes. So 8 D6s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Rolled is... Is... 28. So halved is 14. Fire. 14. You watch as you oh, blast plus it... Oh, does it need more? Yeah. Uh, yes. Plus. <laughs> if you've plus, got more damage, now is the time. Plus a D8. Okay. Seven more. And if I need to, Candor goes after me. But what happens gonna, after that? I'm going to call it there. The okay. seven points of damage. Uh, you watch as you blast its back. Its actual wings, you catch on fire. And although it, it sort of rolls and dodges in the air, trying to avoid the worst of the flames... Uh, your flame, the immolation almost sticks to it and it burns its wings. And there's a moment where the dragon thinks it's still going to get away. And then candle sort of like bursts to flame and the immolation flares with that same sudden burst of fiery energy. And the dragon just lets out this one final like, no! And slams into the mountains as its burnt wings prevent it from flying. It crashes into the ground, no longer living. Um, and uh, I know we've got some people that got to shoot off, so I'm kind of happy to call it here, unless you guys want to beat up on that mage. <laughs> oh, I want to beat up on the mage All so right. bad. We'll, we'll, we'll go like a few, we'll try and get, squeeze this in. Um, uh, I well, still actually, get Candor. I'll tell you what, I might, I might solve this, because on the mage's turn, who goes next? So unless you want Candor. Uh, I Candor want Candor. To, uh, yeah. Can, just the question is, I got thrown up. Can I land on the lip of the... Yeah okay i land on the lip of it um and then candor does flame seed which just so is Kander gonna flies do up to you and then does a little flame seed at the mage yeah which is a plus nine to hit sure, sure, sure. so that's going to be a 20 dirty 20 20 hits and it is 1d6 plus five fire Plus the D8, I believe. Kandra gets the D8 sure. as well because of Enhanced Bond, right? Sure. So that's going to be 9 plus 3. So 12 wow. extra fire damage from Kandra. 2. 12 points of damage. The the mage like clutches a burnt arm like, ah, ah. And you can see he's like bleeding and heavily beaten up and sweating and bloody. And then end of your turn. Mm -hmm. At the end of your turn, the mage goes next. Guess so what? He starts his round in, in the, storm sphere. the storm sphere, so it'd make a strength saving throw. Yeah, is that every round as well? Damn. Yeah. Is, uh, ooh, it is when it creates the sphere, not every round. Uh, uh, each creature when when it appears or that ends its turn there. Yeah. So uh, when its turn is over. When its turn is over, uh, at the start of his turn, he casts invisibility. And then fucking books it and then just legs it. Uh, invisibly, he is going to attempt to flee, um, trying to get away as fast as his little legs will carry him. Uh, 
And so unless anybody has a way to track an invisible creature. I mean, does I... you leave any footprints? You can definitely try and you can definitely try and track them down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Heck, if uh, you want to carry on, it would be Tarkal next. That's the mage's turn over. Okay, uh, real quick. I, I do want to try that. I want to, I'm going to sure, go up sure, top. Sure, sure, sure. I'm go up yeah. top and I'm going to see uh, if an, I can... An invisible creature, you can still like try and find them. It's just really hard. Like, also, they... I have like crazy perception. So can I aid him by like pointing if I see footprints or something? You, you could on your turn. If we're staying in initiative, then you, you've had your turn. This is Tarko acting. Because don't forget, this is all happening simultaneously, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. you've just done your cool thing. You brought the dragon down. This guy is like turn in invisible and run off Tarko's leaping up at the same time but on the next turn you would be able to use the aid action to help Tarko. it's not a reaction unfortunately mm, mm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna hop up and then at or least Clive, if, springboard. yeah mm -hmm. and then i want to i'm just gonna try to search around to see if i can see like footprints or anything that looks like someone running away sure uh make a if you want to look for footprints it would be survival um, or like signs of somebody like moving through the area it would be a survival check. If you want to try and see if you can see the creature, it'd be a perception check, but it was going to be pretty hard. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to see the creature because okay. I have a plus nine in that and I have a minus one in survival. So, okay. Hold that. Okay. 18 plus nine, 27. Hmm. I, it's 27. I would say that you do just briefly see, uh, almost like a, you know, like a heat haze. Uh, the spell of the invisibility as this creature has, has left the storm sphere they ran immediately out of that and they are basically booking it uh, towards the edge of the sort of sloped uh, mountain that leads down from the keep towards the forests okay um, so the moment I, the moment I see him I'm going uh -huh. to cast command and Ooh. scream freeze <gasps> okay uh, and I am making a what kind of saving throw on that wisdom which I didn't think about but I mean, yay, they're a mage. They could be pretty good. What's the DC? 17. Roll a 3 plus a 5 for a total Ooh! of 8. So, where we will end it, because I know people have got to shoot off. That's amazing! The mage, still invisible, but Tarkle knows where they are. They just freeze in place. And that is more than enough time for Tarkle to basically be like, there! Azara, mm -hmm. Agnes, Clive can all make your way up and i'm not gonna this guy on his better to capture probably... him and get intel anyway yes. um, if that's the idea i would i would say that it would be easy for you to capture this guy and azar is so excited to <laughs> interrogate a traitor <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and that is where we are going to end this episode that was one uh, of my favorite combats ever that was amazing yeah, that was too. so I, much fun i know all of you guys had a good time but i am so sorry nate because those wisdom <laughs> saves the were just, yeah. and the, the, the frightening okay. presence like fear is <laughs> is like clive's number one enemy we got it you guys have got to find a way to make clive immune to fear or something it, uh, yeah it screws him over so bad <laughs> Um, I was happy to be an escalator today. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you like one of those like springs in Mario or something like that, yeah. like just with the shield kind of. Also, like, that is so um... my fault. I just realized I have resistance as a cantrip. I didn't realize what that was. You'd have to actively cast that on him though, and then that means you're not casting like big damaging spells. I would have done that for Clive. I know you would have done that for Clive, but yeah. And then uh, yeah, unfortunately, a dragon and Constitution saving throws for concentration checks is. Uh, Always not a good combo. It just seems really like tough. a dragon can make every save in the world unless you cut their saves in half somehow. Uh, like they, they're, they're I will tell you, they were not particularly good at... Uh, <laughs> they were <laughs> not particularly good at strength, although they still had a plus six to their strength saving throw. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, they're dragons, man. They're dragons, like, they should, they're yeah. Dragons. They're, they're, really they're literally and, half of the game. Yes, and this yeah. is, and, and a lot of people be like, dragons don't have any of those abilities. I'm like, no, this is this is a revised dragon because I don't like the base dragon stats. I think they're pretty boring, so I made a more fun dragon, and I and then we fun. killed it. And then, then you killed it. it, and you did a great job as well. Like it's a it's a tough enemy. There's a lot of cool stuff it can do. Um, the acid acid breath was pretty good. You guys have any little springboard? Jump up, hit it, jump back down. Um, Our combos are getting pretty good. Like all like, of us working together, we're kind of becoming the Avengers. It's it's pretty yeah. dope. Yeah. That's what I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you very much. Let's do real quick shout outs, starting with Anna. We'll just do them real quick and then we'll wrap it up. Thanks. You can find me at AnnaProcer.com. I play in Acquisitions Incorporated and I uh, host esports tournaments at Anna Prosser. Mika. Uh, you can find me at Mika Burton. Uh, the thing I want to talk about technically was leaked, but I can't say it officially. So. Do some research if you want to find out what I'm doing. I tag Shady. 
Hi guys, I'm Shady Penguin. I'm basically uh, a beard with a face. I tag me. <laughs> uh, I uh, don't perceive me, Mark. <laughs> Sherlock Humes. High Rollers D and D. Go watch me there. That's it. See you next time. Thanks very much. We gotta go. Bye. 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 Bye.